Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Let's discuss for a few minutes a very important question to every parent and every grandparent out there. Is keto safe for children? Is the ketogenic way of eating natural and safe for your toddler, your adolescent, your tween, your teen? I'm going to go into detail in this video and we're going to talk about this and see if we can't figure out what the common sense says and then any research we'll talk about as well. So if you know a parent or a grandparent who has a little one and they're worried about his or her diet, feel free to share this on your Facebook page. You can share it with them in a text message or a direct message. Please help me get the word out because people need to feed their, their children and their grandchildren the healthiest diet possible in order for them to grow up and develop into the healthiest, happiest adults possible. That's the goal, right? So let's talk about this. Now, the first 15 years of a human being's life is a, is a magical time. It's a very important time. Basically, all the organs and body systems that you'll use for the rest of your life are just starting to develop. They're doubling in size. Some of them double once a year for several years as a small child grows and gets bigger. And so it's vital that we feed these organs and these tissues and these body systems exactly what they need, the optimal nutrition, so that this child can develop into someone with a high IQ, who's very physically strong and active and agile, that's the goal is to have a healthy adult human when all is said and done when we're raising kids, right? So let's talk about some of these different uh, membranes, some of these different systems and organs in the body, and let's think about this. So first of all, let's talk about every single cell in your little one's body. Every cell has a cell membrane around it, and that cell membrane is composed largely of cholesterol. And so if that's the case, if, if every single one of the trillions of cells in the human body have cholesterol in the cell membrane <clears throat> and without a properly functioning cell membrane, you can have severe disease, then it obviously stands to reason that we need to feed this child what he or she needs in order to make excellent cell membranes, right? And so that's, that's vital. Every cell membrane must function properly or you're going to have some severe disease either earlier or later in life. What about the brain and the nerves, right? They're developing so quickly in children. They're developing their little myelin sheath that wraps up the nerves, that helps the nerve impulses travel much faster, to the to the longer nerves in the arms and legs. So what are what are what are the brain and nerves? What are they made of? The brain is actually the fattiest organ in the human body. It's made predominantly of fat and cholesterol. So it stands to reason that we need to feed our little ones a diet that's rich in the things that the brain is built of. That only makes good sense, right? Next let's talk about bones and teeth. Now, a lot of us think of bones and teeth like rocks, like they're hard, they're set in stone, they're not changing. Nothing could be further from the truth. Both the bones and teeth are living tissue. They're constantly being remodeled and rebuilt. The teeth, it's a much slower process, but it absolutely occurs. And so your bones, we all think calcium. That's what you think about, right? But actually, bones are a collagen matrix. They're made of collagen, and then the empty spaces in the matrix are filled in with mostly calcium, some phosphorus and magnesium and other minerals. But the bones are living tissue made mostly of collagen. And so we obviously would want to feed our child a diet that's rich in animal collagen so that they could build the strongest bones possible. Now, what about our little one's gut and microbiome? right? Our little one is developing their gut, their immune system in their gut. They're going to develop the, the microbiome or the gut bacteria that they'll have through their life. Surely we should be feeding a child an ancestrally appropriate diet that is rich in whole foods, in the food groups that our ancestors ate thousands and hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, right? That only seems to make good common sense. Now, what about our immune system? Our little one's immune system is evolving very rapidly. It's changing. It's, it's learning to recognize new antigens. It's learning to recognize whether this particular cell is friend or foe, whether this particular cell is self or non-self. How silly would it be to introduce foods in our little one's diet? that are inflammatory in nature, that would, would spur an immune response over nothing that could potentially lead to autoimmune conditions where the immune system uh, mistakenly attacks your own body. 
like your thyroid and other other issues and tissues, we don't want that. We don't want to confuse the immune system. We want to feed this little one an ancestrally appropriate whole foods diet so that they can grow a very healthy, strong, vigorous, and intelligent immune system that can recognize self from non-self. So now how does all of that, how does keto come into that? The ketogenic way of eating low carb, high, high healthy fats. So for 99.999% of human beings existence on this planet, we have eaten all the fatty meat we could get our hands on, a little veg, veg if we couldn't find any fatty meat. And then once a year when the fruit and berries were ripe, we would eat a little of that, right? But for the vast majority of our time, we ate keto. That's what we've eaten our entire existence on this planet. That's why we've evolved into the species we've evolved into with this very large brain with all these trillions of neurons, right? We couldn't have done that if we weren't eating fatty meat a lot of the time. It, it, uh, the uh, archaeology, the anthropology, the evolutionary science, they all point to this, that the reason we have such large, large brains, such high IQs, the ability to think about ourselves and to plan for the future is because we ate lots of fatty meat to fuel this very energy-hungry brain of ours, okay? So the common sense of this, it's hands down, it's keto. That's what we've all eaten. 50,000 years ago, a toddler or an adolescent or a tween or a teen, what did they eat? They ate keto. They ate all the fatty meat they could get their hands on. They ate a little veg if they couldn't do better. And once a year, they had a few treats with fruits and berries. But for most of the year, they ate keto. That's what they ate. And so the common sense is very firmly on the side of the ketogenic way of eating for children of all ages. And so what we definitely want to avoid is to feed our child a fad diet. Now, what's the definition of a fad? That's something that, that's just come on a short time ago, got really popular, everybody promoted it, and then it kind of dies out. Now, the diets I'm talking about that are fad diets are the standard American diet, the American Diabetes Association diet, the American Heart Association diet, not to mention all the weight loss diets that are obviously fads. These diets have only been around for for 30 or 40 or 50 years. That's less than one one hundredth of one percent of the time that human beings have been on this planet. They are the fad diet. Why would you want to feed your baby, your toddler, your infant a diet that is uh, that foods that are produced by factories, by big corporations that are absolutely a fad diet that a thousand years ago, your ancestor would look at that and go, that's crap. I'm not eating that. I'm not feeding that to my baby. I don't even know where that came from. It doesn't even look like food. That's a fad diet. And you should never feed your toddler, your baby, your infant, your young child a fad diet. That could be very dangerous. There are no randomized controlled trials showing that baby formula made of corn syrup and soy are good for babies. There's no randomized controlled trial showing that that's not dangerous for the brain development of babies. Perhaps we've got we've got epidemics now of ADD, ADHD, autism, Asperger's. Wonder where that came from. Maybe there's a connection there. Don't feed your little one a fad diet. That could be dangerous, right? Big food loves to put things that are easy to manufacture and very cheap to buy, like grains and like fructose and like sugar in all of their products. Those are all fads. Never in the history of the human species have we eaten so many grains, so much sugar, so much fructose, so much sucrose. Never, never, not even if you live near the equator where it was warm all year long, did you eat this many grams of carbohydrates every day. There's no research that shows that the little biscuits and the little treats and the soy uh, formulas, all that stuff, there's no randomized control trials that show that those are safe for, for children. So please think twice before you feed big food manufactured products to your little one. OK, in my opinion, the ketogenic diet is the natural human diet. It's the diet we've been eating for over 100,000 years on this planet. And it's the diet that we should strive to mimic and continue to eat even today. If you want, if you're if you're a, a child, you want to grow up and be strong and healthy, you should eat keto. If you're an adult and you have chronic disease, if you'd like to reverse those chronic diseases, you need to eat keto. Okay. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below and click the little bell right beside it so you'll get a notification every time I get a bright idea. And then also don't forget that Nisha and I go live on my Facebook page 
every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can join us there and ha ask your questions, okay? This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.